Good morning, YouTube. What the crap is going on? Air of Carthage here, bringing you some uh, Air Talks Total War. And um, I'm not really going to theme this episode with like a particular topic, um, but I think it is a good demonstration of uh, lower ranked players versus high ranked players. And when I say rank, I'm not talking about ladder rank. I'm talking about like the number of stars you have. So this is one of my fans, Han Haribo here, who you're seeing on the um, uh, on the yellow alliance side there. And then you've got Sultan Suleiman on the red alliance. Um, he said, I believe that this game was, um, he was like a bronze six or seven star. I, I do believe this is a medium funds game and that his opponent was uh, like a six silver. Um, so what are some of your advantages and disadvantages when you're in these type of matchups? If you know how to play the game well, you can actually be at quite an advantage whenever you are matched up against a player whose general cost considerably more than yours because then you're going to be able to use your troops um, and the uh, monetary advantage you have in order to make up for that. However, of course, the, uh, the enemy is going to have uh, potentially a lot better veteran troops, but not necessarily. It depends on how you play your cards. Uh, let's take a look at the armies in this battle. Uh, Hun Haribo's got two bow samurai. Uh, he's got them backed up with a long yari. And then he's got, I believe, um, three sword units. All of them are katana samurai with the highest attack. I think on any of them is um, 14. So uh, nothing out of the ordinary for the level that he's playing at here. He's got one Naginata samurai here with some decent stats. Um, his general looks like is a leader general. And he's got a couple of hidden cab units here. He's got a yari cab and a fire cab. The fire cab has some pretty good stats on it. Um, and fire cab, for a lot of you who have been wondering what the difference between them and yari cab is, they have a higher attack than yari cab. And they've got a higher charge than Yari Cav. So Fire Cav is kind of like a poor man's great guard, and you don't have to use a retainer to use it in battle. It is pretty expensive, but upgraded properly, a Fire Cav can be pretty dang devastating. And not just in a cavalry fight, the charge of a Fire Cav into infantry units can also be devastating. Um, here you're going to see his Bow Samurai facing off with some enemy matchlock units. His enemy has brought a numbers army. So in this case, uh, the enemy wanted to use his... Uh, Let's see, so it looks like his avatar is a melee focus avatar, and he's decided to bring large numbers of uh, troops to try and overcome uh, any disadvantage that he might have uh, that was caused by his general costing more. So like I said, uh, he's brought large numbers of troops. Uh, he's got two Matchlock Ashigaru, one of which was just slaughtered by bow samurai. Matchlock Ashigaru will get beat up very quickly in a bow fight. Uh, even um, Matchlock Samurai, who ha tend to have better armor, will get torn up pretty quick uh, by enemy bows. Uh, however, they will last a little, a little better. Now here you're going to see a really f uh, smart move by uh, Han Harbo. Uh, he gets charged by enemy warrior monks. He immediately forgets the enemy Matchlock units and focuses his bow fire on these very vulnerable um, Naginata warrior monks, which we all know are, uh, fall victim easily to arrow fire because of their lack of armor. And so you're going to see this one unit of um, Naginata warrior monks just get absolutely slain. And this is just by a bow samurai, not even a bow warrior monk or a daiku samurai. They're going to absolutely uh, destroy this unit before it enters combat. And then it's going to be easily countered by the, uh, the enemy uh, sword units here. So what would have otherwise been a pretty powerful attack um, from some pretty powerful melee units was quickly countered and, um, and uh, taken apart there by some uh, rapid response by Hun Haribo with the bows. So uh, that is a great way to counter um, Naginata Warrior Monks is with bow units. Uh, of course the enemy is going to try and rush you to minimize that bow fire or to take out your melee units first. On this side the enemy rushed his Long Yari with the Yari Ashigaru and then he rushed in some Katana Samurai to reinforce. Attacking this unit from the front by the enemy was really a mistake. However, um, this Long Yari is not fully upgraded, and it will eventually fall to these Katana Samurai units. Had this been a more upgraded unit of Long Yari, it would have owned all three of those units easily. And here you're going to see a really excellent hammer and anvil strike by Hun Haribo as well, demonstrating good, solid tactics. And um, solid tactics is really the way that you're going to overcome the players who outrank you or have better, um, have better veterans. So a lot of you say that, that that tips the game and makes it not fun. Um, don't get me wrong, I've had annoying times with it, but I do not think it ruins the game. Um, and, and again, solid tactics will overcome most of that. So making sure that you use um, good sound tactics is always the key. Here you're going to see his fire cab engage an enemy great guard unit and pretty much defeat it. What the enemy decides to do with his great guard though is to pull out of that fight uh, because he knew he was going to lose and he's going to go try and cause as much damage as possible to the enemy, or to Hun Haribo's bows. And this is bad for him because he needs these bows to help take out those enemy matchlock units. Uh, the enemy matchlock units were causing a great deal of damage to his troops as they fought. You can see they're getting shot in the rear. And indeed, uh, Hun Haribo has lost a considerable amount of troops. 
This Great Guard is a hard unit to route. Um, it's got high morale, and even charging into the face of all that madness, it's still hanging on, which, again, all this time is giving um, uh, Suleiman's uh, matchlocks a chance here to uh, make up the difference. This unit has quite a few kills for just being an unvetted matchlock Ashigaru. So at this point, the fight is going to start getting very close. Um, and Haribo did a good job in the opening scenes, but now he's just getting mobbed with numbers and some other issues. He's using his cavalry pretty well to help try and chase down the enemy avatar. Uh, the enemy avatar is going to be able to cause a lot of damage because it's a melee avatar. You can see on this flank he's getting routed uh, by these enemy units. He's using his cav to try and counter it. And uh, in the center he's kept a unit of Naginata samurai in reserve. Um, and it looks like they're going to be moving into combat now. Uh, keeping a reserve unit for moments such as this can be very handy. And uh, you can see he's got some warrior monks into the back of his men, too. His general is somewhere in the mix here. I believe both generals are right in this vicinity. Uh, you can see them duking it out. Uh, leadership general at this rank is not going to have a whole lot of defense. They're pretty vulnerable, and losing them is bad. You can see Hun Harbo's general actually in the center of that little square right here, getting attacked by Yari Ashigaru. Um, he's still standing his ground, though. Hasn't died. In fact, you can see his general there in combat. Let's take an overview of the battle real quick to show you what's going on. So the battle has come down into one last melee blob here. Um, the enemy general was injured, and so his troops start to waver, but then Hun Haribo just lost his general. And so uh, now it's going to be up in the air. When you get down into these fights, it can really just go one way or the other. Uh, you can see that it looked like Hun Haribo had it, then one of his troops routed, and now the enemy's doing good. And now it really looks like he's going to lose the battle. Um, and but again, you know, when you when you lose both generals and you get down into a, a few number of troops here, you really never know what's going to happen. You're you just go up to fate, and you can see here it actually starts to turn around. These Naginata samurai being heavily armored um, is going to pay off, and this is one of the reasons why Naginata samurai excel. Their melee defense and armor makes them last longer in a fight. And when it comes down to a fight where units are tired or worn out, that can be very handy. Um, and again, you can see the carnage going on here. Um, these Naginata Samurai are going to end up um, saving the battle with some excellent throat stabbing. Um, <laughs> I love Naginata Samurai. They're a very uh, versatile unit. And some of you might be saying, Air, Naginata Samurai are too useful. They're, they're good in every situation. That's not true. They're not good against matchlocks. <laughs> so um, that is the one weakness of Naginata Samurai. Uh, they are indeed extremely vulnerable to matchlocks as they are very slow and armor does very little to stop matchlocks. So uh, excellent battle there to Hun Haribo. Way to overcome um, his opponent there who had some advantages at some point in that battle and I thought he did a really good job of using his troops well. I've got one more video or one more replay that Hun Haribo sent in. Let's watch it and let's go through it. Alright, in this match Hun Haribo faces off against a player that I'm just gonna call SPQR. I don't know if uh, what's a clan tag there and what isn't. So I'm just gonna call him SPQR for the sake of this battle. They're playing on the Ishiyama Ruins uh, which has four key buildings. You're gonna have an archer dojo, a workshop, a shrine, and a sword dojo. Um, all of those are going to need to be controlled. Um, unless your tactic is a rush tactic, um, you can quickly rush in while your opponent is spread out trying to capture key buildings. Um, so the key buildings I do like overall. They make the game interesting and make it to where people can't camp. I think it was a good addition. Don't know if we're going to see these in Rome 2 Total War, um, but it was an interesting way to try and um, ward off uh, camping type boring defensive battle attitudes. Now don't get me wrong, there's some fun sometimes in playing an attacker versus defender battle. But it's also fun to see people meet on open ground and do some maneuvering um, and enjoy the game that way as well. Hun Haribo's got two bow units. One is a bow warrior monk. One is a daiku samurai. He's got four sword units. And he's also got two nagi warrior monks. Uh, I think there is a nodachi mixed into the sword units. None of his have huge upgrades. As you can see by his general's banner, he's not um, advanced too far into the ranking system. His opponent uh, starts out visible uh, with some light cab visible here. His infantry is absolutely brutal. He's got a Daikyu Samurai. He's got three Naginata Samurai with 18 defense. Uh, these are some extraordinarily upgraded units. Uh, he's also got four Katana Samurai with 22 attack. These are very cost effective um, uh, as far as the upgrades. You can see that these guys only have um, seven chevrons. and um, Or six chevrons, sorry. Uh, the circle is five and then they've got the one. So. What this tells me about the uh, the ten star player that Hun Haribo is playing against is he understands the value. Uh, he doesn't waste all of his upgrades into units. 
um, even though um, you could probably, or I mean they're just not all the way up to 9 chevrons, but he, he's done cost effective upgrades here. His guys have upgrades that are going to give them the most bang for their buck and play to that unit's strength. For instance, his uh, Naginata Samurai have upgraded defense, which means they last even longer. His Katana Samurai have upgraded attack, which means they hack down enemy units faster. Um, this is a player who knows what he's doing. Um, he's using Light Cav here too, which a lot of people would be like, what the heck, Light Cav, that stuff sucks. Um, but do not underestimate Light Cav. The players who do use it, use it for one of two reasons. One, they're either a new player and they have access to nothing else. Or two, they use it because they know how to use it. Light Cav has excellent line of sight and is good at revealing enemy units and traps. It's very fast and there's really no other unit of cavalry that can keep up with it. And if you upgraded the speed on them, then they come extremely fast. They can be devastatingly effective on a charge against bow units or matchlock units, and sometimes even sword units if used properly. Um, and like I said, they're, they're kind of squirrely, they're fast, and they're hard to catch. Um, and like I said, usually the players who use them know what they're doing. So hopefully Hun Haribo is going to play some degree of safety here, as a lot of times light cab are used to lure you into a trap. Uh, like waiting matchlock units that could be in the woods or other cav units. Hanharabo here is um, little fearful of these light cav at the moment, and perhaps from seeing the amount of expensive infantry his um, opponent brought, he assumed that maybe he doesn't have any other cav to back up these light cav. But you're going to see something here. When this light cav charges into this Yari cav, when someone's confident about charging light cav into yours, that means that there's probably a little more to it. So whenever his opponent didn't immediately pull back with that light cav, it should have been a tip off to Hun Haribo that that was a trap. Now, don't get me wrong, I've made this type of mistake too, so I'm not trying to run him down like, oh, Air definitely knew that. But that's just some advice that I can give you when you go into these fights. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, so watch out for traps in that case. So anyway, here you're going to see uh, Hun Haribo run away his cab, try and survive. As far as the key buildings go, um, SPQR is going to gain control of the shrine. Um, and Hunt Haribo is going to capture every other building, and that's the reason I'm telling you that is I'm just going to fast forward now, because this this turns into a fight where, um, and I'll I'll turn it over here. We can see it. It's a game of cat and mouse to see who's going to win the uh, cab fight. So Hunt Haribo makes good on his mistakes and now starts to use his cab uh, very uh, very strategically here to try and gain a decisive advantage in cab. He will lose an infantry fight, period. In a straight-up infantry fight, he will get steamrolled by um, SPQR's infantry. So right now, he's trying to gain a mobility advantage. That allows him to make hammer and anvil attacks, which can turn the tide of a battle. Also, another thing that Hun Haribo is going to want to do is not just win an archery fight, but you need to have ammo and men left over because um, Katana Samurai are somewhat vulnerable to missiles, and he's going to want to capitalize on that. Again, it's in Fast Forward. Hun Haribo had a unit over here that really looks like he's going to lose this unit, and through some extremely crafty maneuvering and micromanagement here, he keeps this unit alive. So uh, the enemy avatar, by the way, is um, a melee uh, leader avatar. So he's got mostly uh, leader experience, but they've upgraded all of the attack features. So that's why this player is running his general out after this enemy cav as well. Um, and you can see here that Hun Haribo manages to save that unit and drive back the enemy cav. And again, it becomes a game of cat and mouse here. Um, I do think that uh, SPQR was a little too aggressive with his cab right here, and he takes a few unnecessary losses, but he doesn't end up just losing his cab altogether. So again, here you can see both players making very good use of uh, maneuvering and strategy to try and bait their opponent into a trap and gain an advantage. Uh, SPQR has taken up a hill position here, and he's content to just sit there. Um, if I were him, uh, to be honest, I would have pushed my attack now. Um, because by pushing my attack now against Hun Haribo, you would have come down from a superior uh, position, which means you guys would probably have a little bit of a downhill advantage, and your cab would be able to directly counter Hun Haribo's cab um, and keep them busy for long enough for your infantry to steamroller them in an infantry fight, and then by the time his cab was free, the infantry fight would be over. However, you're going to see that SPQR chooses to take a much more passive um, stance here and really try and draw this fight out for longer. Um, so you're going to see the bow fight start to, uh, you know, they'll trade some shots. Neither player wants to come out of the woods because you do get an extra advantage while in the woods. Um, and here SPQR puts some extra pressure on. He starts to lose the shrine to Hunt Haribo, but he's going to move up this Naginata Samurai to take the Sword Dojo. This is going to be difficult for Hun Haribo to challenge because you can't attack that unit with horses. You can shoot arrows at it, but it's going to be less than effective because they have high armor, and his Naginata attendant can't face it down. So really the only way for Hun Haribo to counter this is to send up some sword units, which is risky because you don't want your sword units to be too close to this hill, where then um, the superior sword units of SPQR can run down the hill into a successful charge against your sword units. So Hun Haribo does a very good job here of just, you know, placating this out, letting, letting the battle go here, 
and he's going to just do some bow skirmishing and try and weaken um, the units of SPQR. SPQR again uses that light cav to um, to kill a lot of Hunharabo's bows, and that is actually a pretty crippling blow. So some of you might say, man, uh, SPQR just lost all his cav, what an idiot. Um, but he's not really an idiot. He killed so many of Hun Hunharabo's bows that even if Hunharabo is able to win the uh, bow fight, he's going to have an extremely hard time using those bows to any good effect against the Katana Samurai. So this battle became even more challenging at this point for Hunharabo to win because SPQR is in a position now where his Katana Samurai will be able to attack unopposed by enemy bow units. So this fight is actually looking kind of bad for Hun Haribo at the moment. However, he does maintain the ability to use his cav um, to devastating effect in hammer and anvil blows. This could be challenging though because if SPQR uses his Naginata Samurai correctly, um, those guys are going to be able to fend off um, a lot of cav attacks. Now here you saw a quick bonsai charge from uh, the Nodachis to drive back these Naginata Samurai, extremely effective on the pottery of Hun Haribo. That unit took um, 31 losses, and here you're going to see the fight kind of start to begin. At this point, SPQR moves down off of the hill. He's still in a very superior terrain, uh, so this is probably why you're not seeing Hun Haribo charge forward. Um, he's wanting these guys to come all the way down to flat ground. He's leading the charge with his Naginata Samurai, which is going to keep Hun Haribo's horses from doing a direct charge into his Katana Samurai, which would be pretty darn effective. Um, but these Naginata Samurai alone are sometimes a match for uh, Katana Samurai just because of the uh, stats they have. Now Hun Haribo does have the Shrine, which means his guys are going to have very high morale. This is going to be a big advantage. However, no one controls the Sword Dojo, and at the moment that means that really SPQR is at an advantage because his guys have such higher attack and defense. Um, so we're going to see the fight begin. Like I said, his Nagi Monks are going to face off against this Katana Samurai um, and this Naginata Samurai. The Monks ought to be able to take the uh, Naginata Samurai. This fight against the Katana Samurai, though, is not going to be nearly so easy. Hanharbo is going to reinforce with sword units and try and keep this fight going well. He moves his general over to support. And here comes a devastating hammer and anvil blow. So again, good solid tactics here from Hanharbo. The mistake he makes, though, is he does not immediately remove these guys from combat. He could have ridden them straight through his lines and taken them to safety and brought them around for another charge. However, here his cavalry gets caught up with some Naginata Samurai, which is going to be very crippling. You can see that he was able to rout those units with that charge, but since he didn't get away with his cavalry, he can now not run another Hammer and Anvil charge with his cav unit. Hammer and Anvil can turn around some pretty serious situations, so now Hun Haribo is in trouble. And that is that in a long, drawn-out fight, the uh, infantry of his enemy is going to have superior attack and cause a great deal of damage. SPQR catches on to the hammer and anvil thing and starts to run off uh, the enemy cab with his extra Naginata units, which is going to put Hun Haribo, like I said, in a very bad position. He decides to go for a charge on the enemy general, um, and again, he should have immediately retreated, but again, his uh, cab gets caught up with extremely uh, tough spear units, and they're going to get destroyed, which means that his hammer and anvil ability is gone now. He could have kept these Naginata units busy and running around um, with his uh, cab unit because that mobility gives you that. But now you're going to see a grind out fight start here. He's got some Nagi monks left here and he's got a lot of swords left over here. Uh, but his enemy has a lot of swords left as well. Um, so really this is becoming a grind out match and this is really not the type of fight that he wanted to be in at this point. But you can see that this battle is very close. Hun Haribo hasn't given up and he's going to keep going here and uh, his men are are really going to start fighting for their lives. Uh, both generals are in stand and fight. However, um, SPQR's general is uh, in worse position here at the moment and is uh, very close to being killed. Uh, you can see this is him right here. And if indeed he's killed, it could be a devastating morale blow that would allow Hun Haribo to win the fight. Um, but like I said, the, uh, the superior attack from the enemy units is going to be a big disadvantage that he's at right now. So we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if his Nagi Monks, which again, their morale is extremely high, which is why they're staying in this fight, even with only 31 men left, and doing so well. The enemy general here is wavering while these monks continue to go unwavering in the face of uh, what was overwhelming odds. He did, um, SPQR pulled off these Nagi Samurai to attack Hun Haribo's general, and that's going to be a bad turn of events. So even though Hun Haribo gets rid of the enemy general, his general starts to take damage here. And so you can see that this battle is very much up in the air. Uh, the loss of the enemy general does cause some of his troops to rout. However, now that Hun Haribo's general is in trouble, uh, here in a moment the enemy infantry will stabilize, and now Hun Haribo's infantry is going to destabilize. And you can see that when that happened, that unit of warrior monks that had kept holding on now routed. And uh, pretty much this battle just turned against him. So even though it came down to the wire, 
I think what Hun Haribo could have done better there was to just really focus on his bows, as they were the key to winning that fight, uh, because he would have going to have to do damage to SPQR's Katana Samurai. Of course, SPQR did not make that easy. He kept his Katana Samurai hidden in the woods to keep them away from the bow fire. So I say that that's what Hun Haribo could have done. Obviously, that's if he could find a way to do it. Um, so I think that overall, though, he played extremely well here. Some, uh, some pretty good use of hammer and anvil strikes in both battles, although I think that the improvement he could have made there was getting those cav out of there. If you're doing a hammer and anvil strike with katana cav, they can stay in the fight for a moment, but if you're doing it with yari cav or fire cav, remove them from the fight as soon as you get done with the charge, and then do another uh, charge on Rome Total War, it was called cyclo charging. It's actually very effective because those units get most of their damage off of the charge. You don't want to leave them in prolonged combat as they have poor melee defense and armor. Um, and so it'll end up putting them in a bad situation. In any case, uh, great videos. Thank you to Hun Harbo for submitting those. Um, I kind of think it's too bad you lost that second one there. I thought you played really well against an opponent who really had a lot of advantages. Um, but in any case, uh, good games to all those who were involved. Hope you enjoyed these. We'll see if it gives us a results screen. It does. You can see that he was outnumbered by a little bit on that last battle, and his opponent had very good troops. The reason he was outnumbered is because he spent some more money on bows, and um, uh, so that kind of left him a little bit outnumbered. Let's see, um, SPQR, look at these Nagi Samurai here, 147 kills, that's pretty substantial. His Daiki Samurai also got a lot of kills. These Nagi Samurai, you would have thought his Katana Samurai would have been the deadliest ones, but again, never underestimate those Naginata Samurai. And if you want a hard counter to Naginata Samurai, the only real hard counter to them is Matchlock Monks. Also, a Nodachi Samurai on the charge will destroy a uh, Naginata Samurai. However, in a prolonged fight, that's kind of up to question because the guys have such a high um, defense value. So let's take a look at the stats from Hanharabo. His um, Nodachi Samurai, of course, got a lot of kills. Uh, some of his monks did pretty good, uh, but the rest of his units you can see suffered um, due to different reasons, which in the end, you know, caused him to lose the fight. Uh, good game, like I said, to both players. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll be back soon with some more Air Talks Total War episodes. Some of you may have noticed I've been gone a little bit. I've actually recorded um, four videos today, uh, including this one. And so I'll be uploading those throughout the week, so my goal is to bring you more videos, and I'm going to accomplish that by using some of my free time on the weekend to pre-record videos that I can upload throughout the week. So I've got at least four videos coming to you this week, and uh, possibly a few more if I'm able. One other question, well, actually, I'll bring it up in a little Q&A video, and we'll make it five videos this week. Anyway, like I said, hope you all enjoyed this. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.